This is a tutorial on how to write a simple Hello World program using uh, just DOS and uh, FLTK with Visual Studio .NET. Uh, let's start out with an empty directory. And in that directory, I'm going to copy one pre-made makefile, which is um, a makefile appropriate for my user environment. And you can type this in yourself and make your own makefile. Uh, the important things in here are the uh, include for the FLTK directory and the FLTK lib itself, and then all the other Windows libraries that uh, FLTK needs. So let's start out with a simple Hello World program. And this is something that all FLTK programs need to begin with, is the include for fl.h. And uh, because I'm going to create a window, I have to include the FLTK window class include file. There's one include file for every class in FLTK, so um, you have to include the ones that you need or plan on using. And a simple main. So uh, now this is one of the things I really like about FLTK is that with about three lines of code, you can get a window up and a working program. In this case, I'm going to create a window, which is pretty easy to do in FLTK. You just say FL window. The uh, width and the height of the window are specified here as 400 wide and 200 high. And I'm going to tell it to show the window, because if I don't, the window won't show up. And then the last thing is uh, I return the value of uh, the FLTK command loop. This function only returns when all the windows are closed. And that should be a fully working program. Um, if I compile it with nmake, which is the make uh, program that comes with Visual Studio, uh, it compiles the program, and you can see the uh, command line that compiled the FLTK program. And uh, that's all it takes. You run it, and there's my window. There's nothing in the window, which is exactly what I asked for. No window title, no buttons, uh, just this little cancel button, which is about all I can run right now. Let me flesh the program out a little bit and stick a button in there. Uh, I'll stick in uh, below the window definition, I'll stick in this FL button call, which will create an instance of a button, and I'll call it but. And uh, most FLTK widgets take four values, an X, a Y, a width, and a height. In this case, the X and Y will be 10, 10, the width will be 100 wide, and make it 25 high. And let's call the button uh, testing. So this should create a button in the window. And uh, because I'm using a button, which is another uh, class, I'm going to have to uh, include the flbutton.h file. And if I compile and run that, I should end up with a window with a button in it called testing. And uh, one thing I should take care of here is this window uh, has no title, and that's easy to set. If I uh, go up here to the window definition, there's actually an optional argument, which is the label. Uh, and I'll call this like, hello program. And uh, when I compile that, now I've got uh, that text in the title bar. And uh, next would probably be to do something with this button, because right now it doesn't do anything when I hit it. And that's because I don't have a callback set up for the button. So uh, why don't I make a callback called uh, my function? And uh, callbacks in FLTK always return a void. And uh, the first two arguments are an FL widget pointer, which is a pointer to the widget that invoked the callback, and uh, a void pointer to user data, which can be any kind of data that you want. You get to tell it what the user data is. And in here, I'm going to put a little print statement. And so right now I've declared a callback function, and to attach it to the button, in here below the button definition, I'll say but.callback, and set my function to be the name of the callback. So what that'll do is whenever I hit the button, um, it's going to be set up so that it calls this function, my function, whenever the button is pressed, and it'll just print this little message. 
if I include standardio.h. Because I got a little compiler error there. Try that again. So now when I press the testing button, uh, it's doing the print statement. Let me pass some user data in there. User data is something that gives the callback function uh, some context. The user data is actually passed as an optional argument, uh, second argument to the callback here. So I'm going to cast in uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, which is just an integer. Um, anything that I put in here, this can be an integer, it can be a class pointer, it can be uh, any kind of data you want as long as it's one piece of data that can be cast to a void pointer. So what will happen is whenever you uh, push the button, it will call this function, pass this data in as the user data, and then the function can do with that user data whatever it wants. So in here, I'll add on uh, a print statement that prints out what the callback uh, user data is. And that should print uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, and actually, why don't I cast this as an integer so it doesn't try to turn it into a hex or something. So now when I hit the button, I'm getting that user data passed through the 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, another thing I could do is have it exit the program when you hit the button. So instead of printing this message, um, I can just have it uh, exit right after that. I think exit needs a standard lib.h. So now when I push the button, it exits the program. Uh, one other way to exit the program is to click this little exit button, which is the close window, the operating system's close window button, which is something that you can trap if you um, add a callback function for the window. So down here I can say window dot callback my quit and if I declare a my quit function which is uh, very similar to the my function in this case I'll have it print to standard error win quit and then have it exit so now when I make this guy and run it when I click the exit button, what it should do is print out win quit uh, before it exits. And uh, that's what it does. And in there is where you would put uh, checks to see, for instance, if you had a program like a text editor and you wanted to check to see if the user uh, had saved their data before you killed the window, uh, you would do that checking on this callback. And if they didn't save, you could pop up a dialog saying, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, do you want me to save? before it actually exits. And you don't even have to exit. In fact, if you get rid of this exit in here, then that X button becomes uh, useless. Uh, that actually disables uh, the ability to kill the program from that X button uh, like that. Fortunately, we have the testing button, which will exit for us. Otherwise, you'd have to kill it with a task manager or something like that. One other thing that I should probably cover here is um, how to derive a class uh, from an FL widget. Uh, in this case, I think what I'll do is derive a class from an FL window. Deriving classes is kind of interesting because then you start to make, you can make your own classes appear like they're actually FLTK classes themselves. And it has sort of the, the nature of, of turning a program like this one inside out because right now this really isn't a C++ program. Uh, this is sort of a you know, a simple C program with some uh, C++ stuff on top. But uh, to make it a real C++ program, you know, we can define our own class. So why don't we do that? Um, and this class will derive from an FL window. So I need to make this um, public. And why don't I create some data? I'll make everything public just to make this program easy to write. Um, so for the constructor, um, I'm going to follow the same kind of prototype that the FL window has, which is this width, height, and uh, label name. So uh, up here I'll say width, height, and const care pointer name. And I'll default this name to null because uh, that's the way the actual FLTK window 
lets you optionally specify that argument. And uh, because I'm deriving this from an FL window class, I need to pass the width, the height, and the name. And in the constructor, I'll initialize the data to be 1, 2, 3, 4. And uh, I guess in here, maybe what I'll do is take all of this stuff and put it inside the class, like the, uh, for instance, the button definition, which I can drag up here. And uh, because I'm putting this now in the constructor, uh, I'll have to make this an actual allocated uh, instance, because otherwise if I do this the way it's coded here, as soon as it falls out of the constructor, this button will disappear again. So uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, make a button pointer and set it equal to an instance, a new instance of an FL button. If I can spell button. And uh, yeah, I think I'll keep all this. And because I'm making this a pointer, now that's starting to look right. So now I'm declaring the button inside the uh, constructor for this class that I'm making here. And why don't I also take this um, callback for the button, make it a private member of the class, and uh, do the same thing for the window callback itself. So I'll shove that in here too. And uh, so now it's beginning to look more like a class and less like a program. Uh, so down here, I'll change this FL window to be an instance of foo and uh, change everything. And pretty much this class is going to act just like an FL window. Um, it has, it inherits this uh, show method. And in fact, the show method um, I can even shove inside the constructor so that I don't even need to specify it really. Um, Defining the class will just automatically show the window. And uh, I can also put the callback for the window inside the constructor too, so that it automatically creates this as soon as you instance this class. So now the main becomes really simple. I just instance the window, and it automatically, uh, in the constructor, does everything. It initializes this little bit of private data, creates a button inside the window, sets a callback for the button, uh, tells the window to show itself, and sets the window quit callback all inside the constructor. And uh, hopefully, if I didn't screw anything up here, this should just compile and run. So now I've pretty much got the same program. Um, and here, when I click the uh, cancel button, I've still got my little win quit message. And when I push the testing uh, button, it, uh, it destroys the uh, program. And uh, if I put this exit back in here, then when I uh, hit the cancel button um, or the window close button, it should uh, kill the window correctly. Anyway, that's enough for this uh, Hello World program. Uh, you can study this program and the uh, make file by just hitting pause in your uh, player here. And uh, this make file is something that you might find very useful for making your own programs. Uh, I prefer doing everything, uh, as you can see, from DOS. The next uh, tutorial that I'd recommend you take a look at is the Fluid uh, Hello World tutorial. See you there.